There is currently no dialogue between Bulgaria and North Macedonia. And this is the latest statement by Bulgarian President Rumen Radev over an ongoing dispute with Skopje. He made the remarks after his North Macedonian counterpart, Stevo Pendarovsky, said he hasn't had a single constructive conversation with Radev in the last two years. Sofia and Skopje have been at odds over language, history and the rights of ethnic Bulgarians in North Macedonia. Skopje earlier announced it would include Bulgarians in the preamble as a constitutive people to avoid Sofia's repeated EU blockades. Bulgaria's foreign minister said he wished to be consulted during the process. Penderovsky has condemned the Bulgarian request as scandalous and added that a demand to interfere in the internal process of any country is unprecedented and absurd. Let's take a closer look. За наша блокада кон Европската унија, каква што немало во историјата на Европската унија, од 57 година минати од до денес, ни една држава не блокирала друга држава со тоа што им велела вие не сте тоа што мислите дека сте. A row between North Macedonia and Bulgaria has flared up once again. Bulgaria's acting minister of foreign affairs says Sofia wants to be part of the process of including the Bulgarian minority in North Macedonia's constitution. Skopje has called the request scandalous. Такви барања не упатуваат ниту окупаторите кон земјите, територијите или државите кои ги окупираат. Од 21 век е апсолутно непримерено да барате да се мешате во внатрешната политика и во внатрешните политички и уставно-правни процеси. And this standoff has revived the core problems between the neighbors. In 2018, right after changing its name and lifting the EU veto imposed by Athens, Skopje faced a roadblock when Sofia vetoed its EU bid due to identity issues. Bulgaria claims that Macedonia's history and language have Bulgarian roots, and that its language is just a Bulgarian dialect. After long talks last year, Bulgaria voted to lift its veto on North Macedonia's EU accession talks. Albania and North Macedonia are opening the accession negotiations to the European Union. But tensions have yet to ease. In Skopje, thousands of protesters rallied against another compromise on identity issues. Republica. Bulgarian cultural centers have become another issue in North Macedonia. Dozens of people protested the opening of a center in Ohrid. A few months later, the center's secretary was severely beaten. And relations seem rockier than ever. Regional politics are also affecting perceptions towards neighbors. According to a poll conducted last December by the Center for European Strategies, Eurothink, 42% of North Macedonians believe they are under threat from a foreign country. About 28% of them point to Bulgaria, followed by Russia with 4%. On the other hand, Bulgaria is mired in political deadlock. It had five elections in less than two years. And this time, the far-right ultra-nationalist Revival Party rose to third place. A group well known for its pledge to prevent North Macedonia from joining the EU. The neighbors' disagreements seem to deepen, with little hope under the current circumstances of finding a way out. Joining me now from Sofia is Plamen Ralchev. He is an associate professor in international relations at the University of National and World Economy. And from Skopje, we have Dalibor Jovanovsky, professor of modern Balkan history at Cyril and Methodius University. Great to have you both with us uh, on the show. Uh, now, uh, how would you describe the current relations between Skopje and Sofia? Dalibor, uh, let's start with you. Uh, Strong comments from both sides coming in, in recent weeks. Yes, yes, yes. Very strong. Well, uh, I can assess the relationship between Macedonia and Bulgaria as a relationship in crisis. And I think, personally, I think that uh, the level of the common understanding or respecting of both sides is on uh, most. Uh, 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 is, is, is in constant uh, decreasing. 
I think that uh, both sides are half guilty, but uh, you know we we can't to 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 be a peaceful or to to say that uh, everything is okay when the other part is denying our cultural, historical, and even linguistical uh, tradition. So I am not an uh, optimist one about the very quick uh, betterment of the common relationships. And now we are going to see what is going to happen in Macedonia with the so-called uh, constitutional changes for the inclusion of the Bulgarians in Macedonian constitutional preamble. Plamen, uh, as we mentioned uh, before the panel uh, started, uh, all this uh, has the latest dispute um, and friction began when Sofia said uh, that they want to be consulted uh, in planned changes to the country's uh, constitution. Uh, but why would Sofia want to do that? Actually, if you want me to describe in, in just a few words the, the relations between Bulgaria and uh, the Republic of North Macedonia, uh, I would say they are uh, very tense and complicated at the moment. And uh, it is because we, we lost momentum in maintaining this common mutual understanding for the last 20 years. If we go back to, uh, to 1990s, late 1990s, we, we had uh, made uh, quite uh, remarkable progress at that time. But unfortunately, for the last 20 years, uh, bilateral relations uh, remained somehow off the political agenda. It was uh, submerged by other issues. And uh, when, when this topic came back again with the, the uh, accession to the EU of uh, the Republic of North Macedonia, uh, many political factors, domestic political factors here in Bulgaria tried to uh, use this topic in order to gain popularity. Uh, I, I mean, uh, one of uh, Bulgarian nationalist uh, formations, uh, Bulgarian Vemero, uh, which was a coalition partner in one of the governments and uh, tried to impose this um, harsh speaking uh, about uh, uh, harsh tone uh, with regard to Macedonia in Bul Bulgarian uh, political agenda. So it's a very complicated issue. Uh, un unfortunately, I've been uh, working on this issue for the last 20 or more years, 20 plus years. Uh, and I can say that uh, there is a, a very complicated mixture of history and politics. And uh, unless we focus on politics, and uh, put aside history and put aside emotions and put aside sentiments and other things, irrational things. Uh, I think uh, in the process of negotiations uh, where politicians are involved, not academics, not uh, the so-called historian commission uh, that uh, has to uh, sort out all the issues, uh, debatable issues or um, unresolved issues uh, regarding identity, language, et cetera, et cetera. Right, uh, right. We are very confused. We are very confused on both sides. We don't know uh, in which direction to go. Uh, politicians, uh, and unfortunately we have to, to say this very straightforward, uh, politicians don't have the courage to move this issue forward. They're just uh, walking around and, and see how people feel in their own country. And uh, they base their statements uh, basically on what people feel uh, around them, what people feel around them in their own country. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, political messages sent to domestic public uh, instead of uh, speaking to uh, to the to uh, to the party uh, in Macedonia, or speaking to to the other side. Uh, that, and I think all yeah. these confusions are very, uh, very uh, burdensome. Uh, we are overcharged with history. We are overcharged, overloaded with, uh, with, with emotions, with sentiments. I think on both sides. And uh, we can't yeah, let, just let's go, move issue forward. Uh, right. Uh, so, Dalibor, do you agree with this? Uh, does uh, what the politicians have been saying, very harsh words from both sides, um, I yeah. must say, uh, does that represent the will of the people? What's the mood in Skopje? And is is there enough even political will to, to continue with the constitutional changes? There, there is no political uh, will in Skopje to continue with constitutional change. And the vast majority of the population, especially ethnic Macedonians, 
uh, do not su support any any kind of uh, inclusion of the Bulgarians in Macedonian constitutional uh, preamble. And there is a lot of explanation about uh, why it is uh, so. For example, personally, I'm going to speak uh, personally. Uh, we are fearing that after the possible inclusion of the Bulgarians a minority in Macedonian constitutional preamble, there will be another Bulgarian demands concerning our language, our uh, history, our folklore, and so on and so on. You know, uh, the um, statements that we are the, some kind of artificial nation uh, created by the Comintern and uh, the former Yugoslav president, uh, Josip Broz, it is very offensive uh, for us. Let's to, 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 to be very, very practical, very clear. Uh, uh, Azeris and Turkish people uh, are speaking very, very similar languages. But no one in Turkey are saying that the Azeri languages was created by the Soviet communists in order to 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 uh, to harm uh, the Turkish linguistically, historically, ethnically, ethnically unity. I agree with uh, my uh, Bulgarian interlocutors and uh, colleagues that we have to push aside the history. Plamen, you know, Bulgaria is facing a massive political crisis. You, you had five elections uh, in the last uh, two and a little bit more years. Um, so how does this crisis in Bulgaria actually impact its relations with Skopje um, and making all this process even slower, although Skopje has to resolve this uh, in order to, to proceed with the EU talks? Yes, you're right. Uh, the process uh, became very slow because we, we can't uh, form a majority in parliament here in Bulgaria. The society is split, and uh, this uh, lack of uh, lack of uh, political energy to move forward uh, actually uh, affect negatively uh, had a, had a very negative impact on uh, the relations with Macedonia because uh, what we uh, what we need is a, a, a visionary politicians on both sides uh, who can communicate frankly and who can negotiate. Uh, all this is about negotiations. Uh, it was very difficult process of negotiations between uh, Greece and, and Macedonia about the name issue. Uh, obviously, there will be long and difficult negotiations between Bulgaria and uh, North Macedonia about uh, any other issues related uh, to the future and to the uh, future accession of the of uh, the Republic of North Macedonia to the European Union. Uh, unfortunately, unless uh, we have uh, a clear majority here in Bulgaria, a stable parliament and stable government uh, for at least more than one year, uh, we can't expect any positive developments because uh, politicians in Bulgaria are very um, uh, cautious uh, about how to how to deal with uh, with uh, Macedonian issue. And, and Plamen, just to, briefly, to just briefly, Petkov uh, or Borisov, who do you think uh, would have more compromises and would made more compromises towards Skopje. Uh, I just want you to compare their policies a, a little bit here. I, I definitely think Petkov will have uh, more chances and uh, will be more prone to, to compromises and do it more uh, future-oriented talks with, with Macedonia. Uh, while Borisov will uh, throw throw uh, the ball again to the uh, historians, to academics, or to, to other committees that will have to uh, to handle the the, the hot uh, uh, the hot stones, so to say. Uh, we, we need a courage, political courage, and I uh, reiterate this uh, uh, again. We need p political courage on both sides, not just Bulgarian side, but we also need political courage on Macedonian side in order to proceed with very long uh, and uh, time uh, time taking uh, and efforts taking uh, negotiations. Uh, okay. Without these negotiations, we can't uh, see this process through. We can't finish this issue. Right. Uh, Plamen, uh, Dalibor, thank you both for being our guests. I don't have any more time, unfortunately. Thank you but very much. Uh, let's uh, conclude that we agree more political courage is needed to resolve this pressing issue in the region. Thank you both. Courage and negotiations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.
Thank you very much. That's it for this week. See you next time. Bye-bye.